Do you have acid reflux? If you do, you're in very good company. 95.1 million adult Americans have acid reflux. Now there is a underlying condition that's causing your acid reflux and I will get to that in a moment. But first of all, let's look at what you're told when you have acid reflux and let's look at how you're treated when you have acid reflux. So when you're having acid reflux and you have that terrible burning, you have the heartburn, it certainly seems like you have too much acid, right? It, but it's, it's not that, but that's what you're told. So let's, let's continue with what you're told and then we'll, then we'll go to the truth. So you're told, oh, you have too much acid. I'm gonna give you what's called a proton pump inhibitor. This is your doctor talking. And he or she says it's because you have too much acid and that's why your symptoms are there. And this is gonna just handle it all for you. And you say, wow, that sounds great. And uh, you get on this medication. And for many people, it really does resolve the symptom. And that's the underlying point that I want you to focus on here is your symptom of acid reflux. Okay, so um, these drugs, proton pump inhibitors, they're one of the most common prescriptions worldwide. It is vital to know that the Food and Drug Administration approves them for two weeks of use at a time, yet, uh, those who are put on PPIs are given an eight-week trial and it's called a it's called first trial therapy so you go into your doctor and and by the way when I'm talking about acid reflux I'm not talking about you know once every six months acid reflux I'm talking about something that you know is bothering you a few times a week and you go into your doctor and you go, this is really bothering me so the first trial therapy is the PPI, the proton pump inhibitor, for eight week trial. Again, Food and Drug Administration, two weeks, it's approved for. So what, what happens in that eight weeks that's problematic? Of course, on the good side, you might get full relief from your acid reflux, which from your perspective is great, and I do understand that. But it's very important for you to understand what these drugs are doing, and what the real cause of your acid reflux is and, and how to handle it without damage to your overall health. Okay, so what the PPI does is it um, decreases a hormone. Now the human body is an incredible, incredible machine and there's a lot of hormones with a lot of jobs. So a hormone called gastrin is responsible for having the cells in your stomach make acid. That's its job. Everybody has a job. So when the drug comes in and really severely depletes the acid, then the brain says, uh, yo, gastrin, you're, you're supposed to be making stomach acid and you're not doing a very good job. And so it sends this impulse to gastrin and it raises the level of gastrin so hopefully it can get back to doing its job, making stomach acid, because it's vital for your stomach to make stomach acid in order to absorb some very important nutrients, digest food, kill bad organisms. There's a long list. Okay, so just within 24 to 48 hours of being on a PPI drug, your gastrin starts to increase, which shows that your brain is not putting up with this change and dislikes it. And so it says, you know, get on the job, produce more gastrin. Within two to four weeks, the gastrin levels can increase three to six fold. So three to six times the normal gastrin levels are produced just in a mere two to four weeks. And remember two is that threshold, interestingly enough, of the Food and Drug Administration saying how long it's safe to be on these medications. So there's a real discrepancy here that you deserve to know. Okay, so now we've got this increased gastrin level three to six times. By the eight week mark, which is that first trial therapy, what's already happened is not only a dramatic increase of the gastrin hormone, but the gastrin is talking to the cells in your stomach, as I mentioned, that are designed to make acid. And they're called parietal cells. So again, the body is very clever. It says, hmm, I, I increased all that gastrin to, to get us back to making acid again. 
I still am not seeing acid. Okay, let's do this. Let's just make more parietal cells. You know, it's kind of like you have so many workers on a job and you want you needed the job done by the end of the week and you're like, hmm, they're not getting it done. Let's add more workers because obviously, you know, this is not a big enough workforce. So your body literally, it's called hyperplasia, meaning making too many of these parietal cells. So where does that influence you? What happens is when you've kind of had enough of being on this PPI, maybe you start reading about all the dangerous side effects and you want to decrease your use of it because you have all these extra cells. When you start to decrease it, they go, oh good, now we can get back to work. We can make acid. But now you have too many of them. So now you're legitimately making too much acid, making it not impossible because my team works very hard on figuring out how to work with these particular patients and have a very delicate protocol to get the body back to normal. But generally speaking, the average patient's trying to wean down and whoosh, they have this dramatic increase of acid production. They're like, whoa, I can't get off these drugs. My goodness, I really make too much acid. And now that's true. You really are making too much acid. Now, before the PPI, when you said, I have, this is getting to the mystery of it all, when you said, I have acid reflux and I feel this burning, you were told you were making too much acid. And that was untrue. You weren't making too much acid. What was happening was your stomach, which is a bag, and it's a bag of acid because that's its job, is to be a bag of acid, it was being compressed. I'm gonna give you one of two alternatives. This is the most common. Your stomach was being compressed inappropriately, so pressure from the outside of it coming in on it, and as the stomach is compressed, it has to get pulled up. Because how does your mouth get to your stomach? Through a tube called the esophagus, okay? And it's only so long. So when the stomach gets compressed, it has to rise up, okay? As it gets compressed, its contents also rise up. So now you have acid going up into your esophagus. That's not normal. And it's not because there was too much acid, it was because there was pressure. So, the oh, let me give you the alternative. The other option is that you actually don't have enough acid. Now this happens as we get older. We do tend to make less hydrochloric acid in our stomach. And when you don't have enough acid, gas can build up. Now we're talking about within the stomach, gas can build up and, and pressure occurs. And you obviously are still making some acid, it's insufficient, but because of the pressure and the gas, the acid can rise up into the esophagus. So it's truly the opposite of what you think. You, you're having those symptoms, so it's, it's very counterintuitive. You're having reflux symptoms due to insufficient acid, but it's secondary to this gas being produced due to insufficient acid. So one is from most common, pressure from the outside of the stomach. The other I just reviewed is pressure inside the stomach, forcing the little bit of acid you are making up the esophagus. Okay, so what's the mystery condition that's causing this? Because we know it's not too much acid initially, right? It's called hiatal hernia. Now, hiatal hernia is when the stomach is pushed up and it rises above your diaphragm. So let's do a little anatomy. Hopefully a picture is gonna come up on your video about now. Um, but you have the diaphragm, two domes. So when you, as you breathe in, they push down. As you exhale, they push up and, and they help you breathe. The diaphragm does a lot of other things as well. One of which, well, let me, let me talk about the opening. So there's an opening between my hands. That's for the esophagus. So your esophagus is passing through and the stomach, this is my left side, the stomach is here. It's a kidney shaped organ and it's on the left side below the diaphragm, okay? It also has, so the body has these beautiful backups and, and redundancies to keep things working the way they should. So the esophagus has, has a sphincter or valve. There's two of them. There's an upper one and a lower one. Now the lower one, this is our diaphragm. Here's the stomach. 
and just, just above the stomach is the lower esophageal sphincter, okay? And a sphincter, as I said, just like a valve, food is coming down, drink is coming down, and these valves open, let it pass, and close again. So it's this mechanism to keep things going. The only direction things are supposed to go in your esophagus is top down. You swallow food, top down. Is it supposed to go the other way? Never. Have, you, have we all vomited at some point and experienced the misery of it going the other way? Yeah, it's disgusting and it burns. It's because acid is not supposed to be bathing your esophagus. So we have these sphincters. We also have the diaphragm itself. Now remember, opening in the diaphragm for the tube called the esophagus, there's the stomach. Right above the stomach where the esophagus joins it, we have that lower sphincter. Now the diaphragm itself acts like a sphincter. So you have this backup plan of an upper sphincter, a lower sphincter, and the diaphragm itself acting as a sphincter, closing off and, and keeping things going in the right direction versus the wrong direction. Okay, so what's a hiatal hernia? The stomach, due to that pressure, has gotten pushed up and it's above the diaphragm. So now the stomach, not the whole thing, just a little bit of it. 95% of hiatal hernias are sliding, meaning they go up, they go down, they go up, they go down. But the esophagus is about an inch wide and the top of the stomach is wider. So even just a little bit of the stomach going up and down is widening that opening. Now, if the stomach is above the diaphragm, obviously the diaphragm acting as a sphincter, we've lost that mechanical advantage. And again, the stomach's a little bit above when it goes up, up and down, up and down. But when it's pushing up, now that lower esophageal sphincter it's not working right either because of the pressure. It's all about pressure, it's so interesting. It's like the esophagus puts pressure to get things down into the stomach. The stomach then turns your food around. Then there's a pressure of the stomach emptying in, into your small intestine. If there's a lot of pressure differentials in the human body, it's really quite fascinating. But when the mechanics get off, they get disrupted, now you've lost that. And that's why you're getting acid reflux, is because the stomach's getting pressured from the outside, it's getting pushed up because of the pressure, and its contents come upwards. So it's not too much acid, it's pressure. And, and when a bit of that stomach comes up, it's called a hiatal hernia. So a hiatal hernia is at the root of why you have acid reflux. A lot of times it's explained differently. People think, oh, I've had acid reflux for a while, and now I should see if I have a hiatal hernia. No, it's, it's likely the opposite. And I did a big, big research into the percentage of this, and it's 75, the, the what did they call it in the research, the um, true prevalence, the true prevalence of um, hiatal hernia with acid reflux is 75 to 100%, 100%, okay. So it was, it was actually 75 plus, and, and, and other studies came up with 80%. So 80 to 100% of the time, your acid reflux is caused by a hiatal hernia. That's a high prevalence. Would you say that's a, something we need to get to the root of to handle this, if 80 to 100% of the time that's the root cause? Yeah. So not only because this is a, a, a geography problem, things are moving in places they shouldn't, it's a pressure problem. It has nothing to do with acid. And proton pump inhibitors are very dangerous drugs. Not only are they addictive, which is how I started this, explaining how you're increasing that gastrin level and you're increasing the sheer number of these parietal cells that make acid, making it near impossible to get back off of these drugs. Not only is that a huge consideration, but then when you're on them, what's more likely to happen? Nutrient deficiencies, infections, heart issues as far as stroke and heart attack, stomach cancer, dementia issues, and it goes on. These are very dangerous drugs. 
And again, the root cause is not too much acid. It's this pressure problem or perhaps insufficient acid. Uh, don't trial that on your own. Get some help before you just start taking hydrochloric acid. That's my, my warning to you. Okay, so how do we, how do we address hiatal hernia? Well, remember, it's that, it's that pushing up, right? The poor stomach is being pushed up, and then the, the opening where the esophagus passes through, and now the stomach is pushing up, that opening has no choice but to widen, and, and that's what hiatal hernia is. A hernia is something protruding through an opening that shouldn't. Your stomach should not protrude through the opening that the esophagus passes through. That's just not right anatomically. So we know that hiatal hernia syndrome can lead to shortness of breath. It can lead to panic attacks. It can lead to heart palpitations. That's a, a different discussion for a different video. But the mechanics of how to handle a hiatal hernia involves where's the pressure, where's the inflammation, where is that coming from? And that's what we do. And I'm not trying to leave you with a mystery. I mean, the mystery is that the hiatal hernia is actually the root cause of acid reflux. That's a huge discovery right there. Can hiatal hernia be treated naturally? That's what we do. Now again, I'm not talking about half your stomach stuck above your diaphragm. That's a large hiatal hernia. I'm talking about the vast majority, vast, vast majority of hiatal hernias, which are small to moderate in size. As I mentioned, 95% of them are sliding. They go up, they go down, they go up, they go down. So we analyze that pressure. Where's that coming from in your gut? Is it food related, diet lifestyle related? Is your microbiome offset? Uh, that's on the 60 to 100 trillion organisms in your gut. Do you have a history of chronic constipation? Do you have a history of a terrible diet? Do you have a history of IBS? Uh, do you have any toxin related issues, whether it's heavy metals, mold, um, chronic viruses. It, it, it can sound overwhelming, but it's not really. We have a very methodical approach of how we go through what it is for you. And it's rarely one thing. It's usually a coming together of a few factors, yet the program is natural. It's non-drug, it's non-surgical, but it's a program. And I know sometimes that frustrates some of you who say, but what's the one thing I should do? What's the one thing I should take? Come on, don't hold back, tell me and I'm not holding back, I'm just telling you the truth. And that's very, very, very important to me. And so someone said the other day, you know, I think more people would, <laughs> would like you if you would just give them solutions. And this is me giving you a solution, a real solution, things that actually work. I've been doing this, my, my team and I, uh, for 40 plus years at this point. And we've developed a very good, comprehensive approach to get to the root cause for you. Is that for everyone? No. Do some of you just want the quick fix? Yes, and I understand that, but I can't lie to you. I can't tell you just do this when I know that that's not going to work for the vast majority and it's just going to be temporary. It's going to be a Band-Aid and I hate Band-Aids. So um, I, I, this is a lot of data, so I hope it, it all made sense. If you did get something out of it, uh, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. We're trying to get more subscribers so that more people can get exposed to this information. It's very important to me that people know their options and they know what they can do because a lot of people are suffering with acid reflux. A lot of people are on these PPIs, don't know the dangers, and it's important. It's very, very important that more people know. Um, so give it a thumbs up, share it with somebody you know who has acid reflux, uh, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content, and we'll talk soon.